Where do I begin? Where do I begin with Raw tonight? Where do I fucking begin? But, uh, hey everyone, this is Michael again. Welcome to my review of tonight's edition of Monday Night Raw. And I gotta say, tonight's Raw was one of the most disappointing Raws I have ever seen. Uh, this was one of the most anticipated Raws uh, because of the whole uh, hyped up storyline. You know where Kurt Angle was going to reveal. You know the seek. You know it's going to be it's, it's going to be the secret reveal that Kurt Angle was going to. You know tell the whole secret uh, text messages that have been going on for for months. You know between him and Corey Graves. And uh, I'll get to explain that uh, when I get to that. But uh, anyways, the show opened with Dean Ambrose coming out. Uh, he had a steel chair with him. Uh, he named it Steely Dan, <laughs> where you know he's naming all you know he names these things all weird. Like he names the chair uh, Dan, and then he named a plant I think it was called Mitch. <laughs> so. It's just uh, funny. And he goes, the reason he's out is because of Miz. You know, he wants Miz to come out. And he ends up calling him out, Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas, so he can pick up what he did last week. Remember last week he was uh, being up uh, Curtis and Bo with the chair, and he was hitting Miz uh, a lot of times with the chair last week. Seth Rollins ends up coming out. Uh, and tells Ambrose why is he picking a fight on his own. Uh, Seth is out to ask, you know, Ambrose, like, will he be standing in his way or standing by his side? And Ambrose says to Seth that he doesn't know, he doesn't know him after he stabbed him in the back. You know, when, uh, you know, three years ago when Rollins, you know, broke up the shield where he hit uh, Reigns in the back with the chair and, you know, Rollins joined the authority at the time and you know uh, Seth says to him oh that was just that was three years ago already you know I and you know he apologized to uh, Ambrose for that and uh, Seth says to Ambrose you know to forget everything that happened in the past and then just and just move on Ambrose uh, still doesn't trust Seth and so Seth wants Ambrose to uh, hit him with the chair, you know, hit him in the back with the chair. And, you know, Seth is just standing there waiting for Ambrose to hit him in the back with the chair. Ambrose then throws the chair out of the ring. Miz ends up coming out uh, with Curtis and Bo. And he says to Seth that Ambrose is not uh, going to forgive him. And that he's the one who's been owning Ambrose. That, you know, Miz is the one who's uh, owning Ambrose. And... You know, he goes on to say that, you know, that Ambrose doesn't have the skills uh, to beat Miz. And, you know, he does it on his own. And then uh, Curtis and Bo then end up retrieving chairs from underneath the ring. Miz picks up the chair that Ambrose was carrying. Uh, all three of them surround the ring with Ambrose and Seth uh, in the ring. And they then they just start, then uh, Curtis and Bo end up, you know, hitting uh, Dean and Seth with the chair. And then we see just Miz hitting Ambrose with the chair outside. Uh, Miz then ends up hitting a Skull Crusher finale on Seth uh, in the ring because they had a chair planted in the middle of the ring. And then just Miz just hits the Skull Crusher finale on Seth. And then Seth just goes face first into the chair. So his face hit in the chair. So it was a uh, okay uh, opening uh, to Raw with Ambrose and uh, Seth. Then after that, uh, Miz, they were trying to get Miz to do an interview. Miz declined and uh, they just left. They just left the arena. You know, uh, Miz, Maurice, and Curse and Bo. And the first match uh, was Bailey versus Alexa Bliss. It was a typical women's match. It was uh, it was just okay. But I'm like, we've seen you know Bailey and Alexa go at it many times before. So yeah, Nia Jax uh, out there just watching the match. 
and uh, I was reporting in an article that Alexa and uh, Naya have uh, formed like a, a team. Uh, got the name of it though, but let's just uh, look it up here because it was in it was in an article uh, that I read today. Yeah, they're I guess they formed uh, this uh, team name at a house show. And uh, they're now called, their uh, team is called Team Rude. So this might, this might end up happening, you know, on TV soon on Raw. So that's their new uh, team name, uh, Team Rude. But uh, it was, this match was okay, but we've seen it, you know, many times before with Alexa, with Alexa and Bailey. He had Sasha Banks coming out, you know, just you know, trying to take out Naya, and then it eventually gave Bailey uh, the lead in the match, you know, dominance in the match where Bailey uh, hit a Bailey to belly on Alexa to score the win. So it was just, you know, okay, just a typical women's match, and you know, we've seen it before with Bailey and Alexa. Then we, after that match, we saw Corey Graves. You know, get a mystery text, and he goes and sees Kurt Angle. Then Kurt Angle and Corey Graves backstage. Kurt Angle, you know, is having second thoughts of you know revealing this secret tonight. You know, he's worried about uh, you know revealing the you know who's been texting him. Uh, Corey Graves ends up telling Kurt Angle that it's going to get out, and that his reputation is going to be destroyed if somebody else reports it. And he tell and Corey Grace tells uh, Kurt Angle just to go out there and that there was nothing for uh, Kurt to be ashamed of. So a little backstage segment with them. Then we saw after that uh, Tyus O'Neill, Apollo Cruz, and Akira Tozawa backstage in the locker room. You know Tyus is just hyping them both up, saying, "Oh well, now Apollo, you lost to uh, Strowman." Uh, Two weeks ago, or you know, whenever it was, and then Akira Tozawa, you, uh, you know, Neville beat you. It's just you know that little talk that Titus gave to both of them, and then Arya Davari comes in and says that he wants to uh, meet uh, Akira in the ring and finish what he started last week on 205 Live. So it was a little you know locker room uh, segment with them. Then we had uh, Mustafa Ali and Jack Gallagher versus Drew Gulak and the Brian Kendrick. This was a meh. This was a meh kind of match, though. Didn't uh, really care for this match. Uh, but you had uh, Jack Gallagher and Brian Kendrick having this little feud where Brian Kendrick has been, you know, dressing up as Jack Gallagher and doing everything. You know, Kendrick's doing everything that. Gallagher does so, but match was this match was meh. You know, Mustafa Ali uh, won the match uh, with the 450 splash on Brian Kendrick, giving uh, him and giving Mustafa Ali and Jack Gallagher the win. So, all in all, meh match. And then we had Enzo uh, Mori come out. Talks about Big Cass saying that, you know, says to Big Cass that he believed in what they both were fighting for. And, you know, when they were both, and then, you know, when they were both throwing out their opponents, they never even won the tag team titles in, you know, NXT or, uh, you know, on the main roster. Then Enzo says that if he gets thrown out, you know, a lot of times he'll get back up. And he then shows a clip from last week with, uh, Big Cass and Big Show, and he says to Big Cass that he sucks, and, you know, he was like, oh, yeah, the paycheck, you know, uh, the check bounced, and, you know, Big Cass ends up coming out, says that if it wasn't for Corey Graves, uh, this whole uh, fight between him and Enzo wouldn't have happened, and uh, he says, Big Cass says to Enzo that he's going to come down to the ring and beat some sense into him. And for, you know, also Enzo to shut his mouth. 
And uh, Enzo says to Big Cass that, you know, he's going to get smoked and he's going to watch uh, because, you know, Enzo is still in the ring. But when Big Cass comes in, Enzo retreats out of the ring, uh, goes into the crowd, sits down, watches what's going to happen to Big Cass. Uh, then Big Show ends up coming out. And then Big Cass uh, ends up striking Big Show. And they just have this really, really weak, shitty brawl. And, you know, we see Big Show throw Cass into the barricade three times. Uh, Cass ends up coming back and starts hitting blows to Big Show. Uh, you know, Big Show then comes back and hits, you know, Big Cass into the ring apron. And, you know, it's just a really, it was just a really slow, weak, shitty brawl. You know, Cass then starts, you know, taking out Big Show again. He actually uh, busts Big Show you know, in the nose, you know, Big Show was bleeding from the, from the, uh, you know, the bridge of the nose over here, and, uh, Enzo, you know, ends up getting into the ring, but Big Cast then just hits a big boot to Enzo, he knocks Enzo out, so, but that's what, that's what happened, it was, a, it was, you know, okay, uh, promo from Enzo, but, Big Cass and Big Show had just a very shitty, weak brawl. So and then uh, after that, we have Roman Reigns being interviewed, uh, going into his match against Samoa Joe tonight. Roman says that tonight he is going to be uh, the guy to beat Joe, and then go on to beat Lesnar at SummerSlam and you know win the Universal Title. So, little interview. Then Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins, Kurt Angle are in the locker room. Uh, Kurt tells uh, Dean and Seth that next week uh, they both will take on Miz, Curtis Axel, and Bo Dallas in a two-on-three handicap match. So, yeah, it's, it's that little thing. And then once again, we had Finn Balor versus Elias Sampson. Uh, once again. Uh, where do I begin with this? It was just the same old thing that we saw last week. And, uh, you know, Finn Balor won the match by disqualification because uh, uh, Lye Sampson, uh, he did a, uh, he picked up the guitar thinking that he was Jeff Jarrett and he smacked Finn Balor with the guitar. The guitar broke. Just like how Jeff Jarrett used to hit people with the guitar and breaking the guitar in the Attitude Era, and you know that was that was kind of uh, that was kind of cool to see. I mean, we haven't seen that in a while. You know, it's throwback to the Attitude Era, so it was pretty cool. Sorry about that, but I was saying, uh, you know, it was kind of cool to see that you know that little throwback to uh, the Attitude Era where you know just Elias was, you know, Elias just. Uh, broke the guitar on uh, Finn Balor, and Finn Balor actually uh, was bleeding, uh, was bleeding from the head, like right here. He had a, like a cut, uh, so it was kind of a, it was kind of a pretty bad cut that he got. So, but all in all, it was meh. It was meh match. Uh, didn't care for it. And uh, now next week we're gonna get. Oh, another rematch between Finn and Elias. And it's going to be a no disqualification match. No DQ match. I'm like, please let please let uh, next week's match be the last between these two. Because it ain't, it ain't going nowhere, this feud. Uh, between Finn and Elias. It ain't going nowhere. Then after uh, the match uh, was over, Boy Wyatt... Uh, he's on tight Tron, he cuts a promo, he's laughing out, uh, what just happened to Finn, and he says that, you know, that, and he says to Finn that he's the worst, that, you know, he's the worst nightmare Finn has seen, and that, you know, he wants to punish Finn, so it looks like we might get a, uh, much better feud, uh, between Finn and Bray, so we'll see how that turns out, though, but I know it's gonna be, a probably much, much better than, you know, Finn, you know, them sticking Finn with, you know, Elias Sampson, who is pretty much a jobber, to me, in my opinion. 
So, and then after that, we had we saw Kurt Angle on the phone. Uh, Bailey and Sasha Banks walk in. Uh, both of them want a shot against Alexa uh, for the title. And Kurt says that he's not going to he's not going to decide who is going to face Alexa. Uh, you know, Bailey and Sasha are going to be are going to decide who uh, is going to face you know Alexa for the title. And Kurt says that next week both both of them will face each other. And the winner will face Alexa for the title at SummerSlam. So that's going to be a uh, good match next week between Bailey and Sasha. You know, hopefully it's it'll live up to you know their matches. Their two matches that they had in, at NXT Takeover. Uh, you know, NXT NXT Takeover Brooklyn, and I think it was NXT Takeover the End. I think it was called uh, where they had. Uh, where both of them had their matches. Uh, I know it was uh, NXT TakeOver Brooklyn was their first uh, match that their first good match that they had, which you know blew the Barclays Center, you know, through the roof. And I think it was I think it was called the end, which they had their rematch. Not so not too sure about that, but correct me if I'm wrong on that. But. That was one of my. That was one of my. Those two were one of my favorite matches uh, between the both of them. And then uh, we had the revival being interviewed about them attacking the Hardys uh, last week, and they say tonight that they will take care about. They will take care about the Hardys, and they said they don't care about you know the Hardys legacy. So it was a little interview with the revival. Then the next match was Arya Davari versus Akira Tozawa. It was okay. It was, you know, disappointing end. Uh, which, you know, you had Div you had Davari, you know, working on uh, Tozawa's arm, you know, dislocating Tozawa's arm, and Titus ended up stopping the match, and so uh, Divar uh, Arya Davari won the match. And Tazal was kind of uh, mad about that. He's like, oh, I, you know, I wanted the match to go on. I didn't, you know, tap out or nothing. So, but yeah, Arya Davari won the match. So, okay match, but, you know, this point end. And then we get to this shit fest right here. We had Kurt Angle come out to make his announcement, you know, for you know, the whole mystery, uh, you know, the whole uh, mystery text that he's been having with him and Corey Graves. You know, him and Corey Graves receiving those mystery texts. And I'm like, when it was announced, I was like, really? They had to do, they had to make, make it this shitty. And I'm like, what was Vince, what was Vince thinking when he thought of this? I'm like, he probably like, yeah, that's a great idea. That's a good way to end the storyline. And I'm like, Kurt Angle comes out to make his announcement. You know, you apologize to WWE Universe about, you know, this whole, you know, mystery text. And he goes on to, you know, reveal like the, you know, the origins to, uh, what ha or the backstory of what happened with this, uh, with this, uh, you know, sort of a mystery message that, you know, he's been receiving, him and Corey Grace. He says that when he, Kurt Angle says that when he was in college, he dated uh, this woman for a while. And he found out, you know, after, you know, they were broken up that, you know, later on she gave birth to a baby boy when they were broken up. And the baby was adopted. And then he, and then we get to the reveal. And... Oh my god, this is one of the shittiest reveals I have ever seen. I'm like, what was Vince thinking? What was he thinking? And this this thing this reveal just pissed me off to no end. It is revealed that Kurt Angle's son, Kayfabe in the storyline, is Jason Jordan. Jason Jordan. Of American Alpha. It would have made sense if 
it was Chad Gable uh, being Kurt Angle's, you know, Miss, you know, Kurt Angle's son, adopted son. But Jason Jordan, really? <sighs> How the fuck? Sorry about that again, but I'm like, Jason Jordan as Kurt Angle's adopted son. This, I, I have nothing. Else, I have nothing to say. It's just this whole reveal had a lot of hype, you know, from last week, where you know it made you hype from last week, where Kurt Angle was at, you know, at the end of the world, Kurt Angle was on the phone, and it was like, who could this be? You know, could it be? Dixie Carter, could it be Stephanie McMahon making her return? No. It's like, you know, we were so hyped, we were like, oh yeah, I can't wait till next week for Kurt Angle to reveal who this mystery uh, thing, who sent these mystery texts, and all we just got was shit thrown in our face. Yeah, Vince, Vince just like, oh yeah, we got the crowd so hyped. Yeah, let, I'm gonna ruin it. And then, I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna throw shit at their faces. Yeah, that's what we got. We got shit thrown in our faces tonight with this whole reveal. And so now, also this pissed me off because this is the fourth tag team that they broke up, that they have, that WWE has broken up this year. First was, it started with Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho. Then DIY. And then... Enzo and Big Cass. And now, American Alpha. This is going to go down... 2017 in WWE is going to go down as the year of tag team breakups. And then, who is there... Now that they've broken up American Alpha, what is there to look forward to on the SmackDown tag team division? Besides New Day and the Usos. Not Breezango. They're jobbers. The Ascension, there they never appear. Who else? The the Hype Bros, they're going to be the next two for for WWE to break up to break them up because we saw in the uh, Independence Day Battle Royal where Mojo Raleigh just threw just eliminated Zack Ryder. So that's going to be a possible uh, another tag team breakup that's going to be coming. So, but who else is there? Look. For? forward to on the SmackDown tag team division. You know, American Alpha, you know, was, they were on SmackDown. Ever since uh, the Usos beat them for the uh, SmackDown tag team titles, they haven't even been used. And Chad Gable now is just there on his own, you know, just competing in singles competition. Probably going to be, you know, another jobber there. So, and even Chad Gable, <laughs> He went on Twitter tonight and he was like, uh, what? You know, for, uh, you know, for the whole reveal. Even Chad Gable was like, what, what the hell is this? So, but yeah, what, what a shitty, what a shitty disappointing, uh, reveal. All that hype just to get shit thrown in our faces. So. And next, and then after that, we had the revival versus the Hardy Boys. Uh, this was the first best match of the night, in my opinion. This was uh, entertaining. This match didn't save the whole, didn't save Raw tonight, didn't save the show. Uh, but it was entertaining. You know, like I said plenty of times, whenever the Hardy Boys are in the match, it's entertaining. And them and and them and the revival put up a good. Put, put on a good match tonight. And uh, at the end of the match, uh, you had Jeff Hardy. I uh, was going up to the top rope. Uh, Dash Wilder uh, pushed Jeff off the uh, the top rope and gave uh, you know Dawson uh, pinning uh, Jeff. And he he grabbed the uh, he grabbed the pants of uh, Jeff, uh, which uh, ended up giving them the win. So. But yeah, the revival won the match. It was the first best match of the night, in my opinion. They put on both uh, both teams put on a good match. So, 
Then after that, we had Samoa Joe being interviewed about Roman Reigns saying that he showed to everyone that he didn't fear Lesnar and that Roman will be a force of nature to him, uh, to Joe. And he says that when he beats Roman tonight, uh, it will be charm. Oh, a small little interview. Then we see Akira Tozawa in the locker room with Titus O'Neil. Uh, he says, uh, Titus says to Tozawa that he had to stop the match because, you know, Davari was just damaging, was just dam kept on damaging his arm, you know, Tozawa's arm. And Akira tells uh, Titus that he wants a match tomorrow night on 205 Live against, you know, Davari again. So, it was a little, you know, lock, it was a little locker room segment. And then we had the main event, uh, Samoa Joe versus Roman Reigns. Uh, second best match of the night, but, you know, very predictable in the end. But uh, Paul, uh, Roman, and Joe uh, gave it all they got tonight. It uh, was, you know, really, it was a really good match. But then, you know, it got predictable, like I said, uh, where Braun Strowman ends up coming out. Uh, comes down, he pulls Joe out of the ring. Uh, Roman hits a right hand to Braun. Uh, Braun then throws uh, Roman through the second rope, which was crazy. Uh, which I was like, whoa! He threw, you know, he threw uh, Roman through the second rope into the ring, which was crazy. And then both uh, Braun and Joe and the Braun outside. Uh, Braun gets in the ring, and uh, Joe ends up putting Braun. You know, in the headlock, you know, the coquina clutch. He lets Rome, you know, letting Roman hit the Superman punch on Braun Strowman. Then uh, Roman, Roman then tries to spear Braun, but Braun ends up catching Roman, hitting uh, Roman with a spine buster. Then he hits, he also hits Joe with a spine buster. Then, you know, Braun is still in the ring. He hits, he ends up hitting. Two running power slams on Roman to end the show. You had the officials from the back come out to try to break it up. So it, Raw just ended with, you know, Braun just hitting those two running power slams on Roman. And you saw J both uh, Roman and Joe just laid out in the ring. Which now it's probably going to be a fatal four-way uh, between uh, Braun and... Uh, well, no, I'm sorry, not Fatal 4-Way. Fatal 4, what am I thinking? Uh, Braun, it'll probably be Braun and uh, Roman and Joe. Uh, one of those uh, three guys who will face uh, Lesnar for the title at SummerSlam. So, but who knows? Maybe, maybe it will be a Fatal 4-Way. Uh, who knows? You know, one of them could... Uh, end up walking out with the uh, with the universal title but who knows what they'll do but uh yeah so anyways that's it for my review of tonight's edition of Monday Night Raw thank you all for watching and I hope uh, Smackdown uh, will be much better tomorrow it will be a much better show because tomorrow is the go home show is a Smackdown go home show for Battleground which is coming up this Sunday you know uh Jinder Mahal is going to bring the Punjabi prison uh, to SmackDown tomorrow. So, but yeah, I know SmackDown is going to be a much better show tomorrow. And I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully it will be a decent show, a decently good go-home show. Uh, we can only hope and see. So, yeah, so thank you all for watching. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned tomorrow night for my SmackDown review. So until tomorrow night, I'll see you all later. Bye.